Greetings, cinephiles. Are you looking for a movie analysis podcast that stands above the rest? Then look no further than Collateral Cinema, the only movie podcast that matters. We analyze good movies, we analyze bad movies, and yes, we also analyze the in-betweens of the world of cinema. So if you like what you hear, find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts. And yes, my friends, we are 420 friendly. So when you listen to us, smoke smoke it it if you've got got it. it. And now... Here's a new episode of Collateral Gaming. The show starts right now. I'm Ashley Chancellor. I'm Bo Maddox. I'm Robert Ortegon. And this is Collateral Gaming Season 7. Welcome to Collateral Gaming, the only video game podcast that matters, where we focus on good games, bad games, and everything else in between in the world of gaming. We are podcasting straight from Texas, and yes, my friends, we are a 420-friendly podcast, so whatever you have, smoke it if you've got it. And welcome to Season 7 of Collateral Gaming. This is our season premiere. Uh, We're coming in kind of late, much later than we had planned. This was supposed to come out in September. Uh, We still got the spooky month content to get out, but we're here. And I'm really happy to be here. Uh, Joining me today is Bo. And also, for the first time in quite a while, Robert from Collateral Cinema. What's up, bros? Yo, what's going on? Yeah, Collateral Cinema is finally back in the house, uh, pretty much uh, with uh, our full lineup here, right? Yeah. Hell yeah. The three of us. I mean, yeah, yeah. We're here, yep, here on Collateral it's Gaming. It's actually a yeah. nice to guest spot on another show, too. Hell yeah, man. Me, <laughs> I feel like a real actor now, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hell it's yeah. the first time all three of us have been on a Collateral Gaming episode since... I don't know, probably like the first season. Something like that. I mean, I, I could have sworn that we were all on the uh, the GoldenEye 64 episode, but I guess yeah. I was You're just... You're right. Yeah. You're right. I'm not really... Yeah, we did do GoldenEye. I mean, I keep up with your show too, Ash. I, I'm just not like really ever on it too. I'm like, yeah. 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 I don't know. But we're here to talk about the, the quintessential first-person shooter. Uh, and it is actually appropriate to be talking about it in October, I think, because it's it's actually kind of a horror game. Uh, and that is the original 1993 Doom. Uh, in part one of our season premiere, we'll be discussing just that game. And then in part two, we're going to be talking about the 2016 reboot. Uh, but today we are talking about the original game that launched on MS-DOS, that started it all, that kick-started the first-person shooter genre. Right, guys? It absolutely did. I mean, it's not necessarily the first in the genre because, I mean, it was kind of a gradual uh, build up to this uh, particular moment in gaming. You know, I mean, 3D... I mean, 3D uh, corridor shooters, I mean, those were a thing uh, going back quite a ways. But this was the first one to truly have a really... Like like a more advanced graphics engine, like it had a more advanced gameplay, like I mean it it, it was pretty it pretty much like took everything that its predecessors uh, uh, set before it and kind of uh, expanded on it, you know. Yeah, I mean even going back to Wolfenstein 3D from there you the go. same developers, I mean that was a first person shooter before Doom, but. Doom was the game that popularized the genre. It's the reason why the term first-person shooter exists today, because for a while they were Doom clones. Yeah, there's a lot of those. Not least of which came from the fact that, you know, this game was shareware and had quite a few mods uh, that have been installed over the years, and, and also the fact that this game has been ported to everything imaginable, to, from, from, like, video game consoles to household appliances... Now, later on, I think we'll talk about some of the crazier things that Doom has been ported to. But uh, before we get into that, guys, I kind of want to just talk about uh, the legacy of this game and, and how, how it... Um, well, 
what what are your personal experiences with Doom? I'm the oldest uh, person here, so I I was pretty much there when all of this uh, came out, when shareware started to become a uh, huge thing in the PC gaming sphere, and and also seeing how much that really revolutionized how games are distributed and everything. Like, I mean, this the, the, the whole model was, I mean, you pretty much uh, put this out as kind of a free-to-play game, at least, like, for the first uh, episode, and then you would... Uh, mail in money to id software or whatever and you would buy the uh the actual full game from them or you would buy another episode from them yeah so, you would there would be like an ad in like a comic book or a magazine you'd have yeah. to send in for it yeah yeah or, or or if you finish the episode that you had it would go to the ending and then it would tell you to uh where to actually send in your money and everything so i mean this was kind of the first real uh f- form of uh of game distribution that kind of uh kind of sidestepped the whole console paradigm and really kind of kind of made games games a little more accessible to people on on the PC uh on the PC uh platform I mean, and whatnot. That whole mail sending in thing, dude, that brings back a lot of memories. It does. It uh, really really I used to like mail in checks to get like goosebump stuff, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Yeah. And they would just bring you like they would send you some books and like, you know, other little pencils or whatever, you know? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And brings back a lot of memories. Seriously. Yeah, I don't have quite as much of a background with this. In fact, I really didn't get into this game until uh, preparing for this podcast. But, of course, like anybody else, I was aware of it. I I was 100% aware of the legacy, and I've played a lot of games that owe everything to Doom. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, we don't have Megan on this episode, who actually picked this game for us. Um Unfortunately, we just had some scheduling conflicts, and we needed to get this episode out as quickly as possible. Hopefully, Megan, you can join us on part two when we talk about the 2016 reboot. That That's probably going to be me and her. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it would be cool to hear her perspective on the game since she's the one that picked it. So you'll have to, you'll have to do it with mine, and, and that is as a, a new experience. This is one of the few games that I just never really got around to playing up until recently. I had installed it on my Switch maybe a year or two ago and tried it out a little bit, realized it was pretty hard and was going to demand more from me than I uh, was willing to give it at the time. And so I'm glad that we had an opportunity to talk about it on the podcast because I I made it through all four episodes of the original game and it's... Uh, the uh, Ultimate Doom expansion. So the f- original three episodes, uh, Knee Deep in the Dead, uh, The Shores of Hell, and yeah. Inferno, uh, as well as the fourth episode that was added in Ultimate Doom, Thy Flesh Consumed, which was quite a bit harder than the first three, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, I, I never really uh, played Ultimate Doom. I think I, I played Final Doom, which is which is more of like just a straight marathon version of the game. It's not so much episodic. It's just more like forty some odd levels of Doom, and you just play straight through it. Uh, but but yeah, I mean the the original episode, uh, uh, Knee Deep in the Dead. Man, that that is like some of the best le- level design I've ever played in a game of this uh, of this type, like ever. You know, what I mean, and, and a lot of that was uh, was because of John Romero. Yeah, yeah. So we have a team. Uh, it Software was founded by John Romero, John Carmack, Adrian Carmack, and John Hall, I believe. Uh, mm-hmm. Tom, Tom Hall, I think, was Tom, Tom Holland. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and man, all, all of those, all four of those individuals, I mean, they, they came together and they just uh, designed quite possibly some of the uh, best level maps ever, you know, and, pr- and pretty much kind of set the standard for how, uh, for how corridor shooters uh, would work after this, but also how uh, first person levels would, first person shooter levels would actually work from here on out. So, yeah, because the thing with Doom was it was fast, it was tight, it had metal music blaring all the time. It was hell yeah, something hell yeah. Else, you know, there was gore and horror and and some just horrific shit as you descend further and further into hell, and all of that is complemented by the level design. You know, like you just run through these corridors blazing fast with, you know, fucking Metallica, Pantera, 
and, and other metal bands sound likes playing. Y- yeah, in yeah, the yeah. They, they're they're approximate. They're approximations of those songs, but yeah, I mean, if if you were into '90s metal at the time, I mean, th- th- this was kind of a little bit of an ode to that uh, to that particular era of metal like and everything. The Vulgar you know? Display album just came out. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, Vulgar Display, I love that like, album, uh, dude. you know, uh, I think uh, Countdown to Extinction, Megadeth's album came out around that time. Uh, Slayer's, uh, I think, either South of Heaven or Rain and Blood was coming out around this time, I think. Cricket and Metallica was number one in the charts. Pantera was number two. Mm-hmm, exactly. Shit. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, that is uh, completely uh, g- completely paid homage to in the uh, music here. And I-, I-, I love the old school MIDI versions of it. I mean, y- you have, like, different uh, mixes de- depending on what platform you're playing it on. Like, Yeah, so I, I actually played the recent Doom 1 plus Doom 2 port. Uh, which was, uh, I actually played the version on Nintendo Switch, but this is on mon- modern consoles. In fact, it was a free upgrade. I was actually genuinely yeah. Yeah. surprised. Yeah. I had Doom uh, on the, my Nintendo Switch that I had downloaded, you know, maybe a year or two ago. And then I just before we were going to do this episode, I got a, uh, a, a notification on my Switch that there was a new version out that was Doom plus Doom 2. Uh, and it mm. includes not just those two games, and including you know some of the additional levels from like Ultimate Doom, Final Doom, uh, but mm-hmm. actually some whole new campaigns that have that were that were uh, completely original. Other campaigns that have been added through the years. It's a real treat, uh, and the music in this version was phenomenal because it's the tracks I think as they were meant to be heard. It's not like the MIDI versions of them, but re-recorded, remastered tracks. Uh, that, that sound, you know, just like metal. And, yeah, I mean, when I say that these are sound-alikes of some of the popular metal bands at the time, I mean, some of them definitely feel inspired by it, but if you go listen to some of the comparisons, I mean, they, they sound almost exactly the same. It was definitely meant to be that. They just didn't have the licensing for it. So... <laughs> yeah, it kind, of, it kind of makes you wonder what would have happened if they could have gotten the licensing for all these uh, great songs and actually had the uh, like CD quality sound playing instead of the MIDI. Someone has probably modded that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure they have. I mean, yeah, yeah, with the way that the modding community is for this game, yeah, they, they probably found some way to have the original original uh, licensed music in, in in this game so mm. yeah well, there yeah. wasn't any megadeth and there was there no there was there was okay yeah i'm pre- i'm pretty sure uh, like one of their good songs i'm pretty sure like maybe symphony of destruction of destruction who take a mortal man mortal man and put him in control let him become Come a god, god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but, too yeah, bad he can't play guitar like you were saying you know <laughs> yeah. the the level design is, is really, really awesome here. Each level just kind of has a different uh, structure, a labyrinthian structure that uh, as, as you descend further and further into the chaos, and some levels are easier than others, and sometimes you're going to you know, run into a room and the lights are going to come off and they're going to throw a dozen demons at you. Uh, <laughs> or in other cases, you're going to be uh, running and constantly opening up the map to see you know, if you could find where you find that yellow access card key <laughs> so you can open exactly. the door. Uh, and there's so exactly. many different secrets and, and, and little bonuses that are that can be found in every single level that in, 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 in corners that you may not think to look in. You know, you might walk forward to this area of the map and then backtrack and find that suddenly there's a uh, a platform that wasn't there before or you know let me just check this random wall and see if there's a hidden door oh shit <laughs> and find some yeah, crazy it, it, power-ups or or weapons it, it actually kind of pays to go around uh hitting the action button on certain uh textures and certain walls and everything because you never know what you're gonna find i mean my, my uh play through this last time around i i was finding uh, secrets that i never even came across uh, when i was originally playing the game back in the 90s so it's like i mean it, it, it almost feels like there's always something new to, that you can find in this game you know yeah. even all these years later definitely. yeah definitely yeah there's always something new every time you play the level and several different game modes, you know, di- difficulty levels to, to play through. Um, I usually play games for the first time on, you know, the normal or medium difficulty and then increase it 
with each playthrough. And, and let me tell you, I, I also tried out the nightmare mode and, and the ultra nightmare mode. And, oh, man. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, yeah. They, they, uh, I think they um, kind of up the uh, enemy count a little bit. They uh, up their AI a little bit. It's Yeah, man. The nightmare mode is insane, though. But but. If you're if you're like me, if you're a denizen of gaming in the '90s, you know that this game has some of the best cheats ever. You know, like th th this was even the uh, first game that really did no clip. You know, like you you could uh, put in a code to no clip through the maps and everything. And, oh, yeah. and also, I mean, th this was also what established like God mode, and you know, the get everything. Like 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 you could. Uh, you could put in a code to have uh, infinite, uh, an infinite radiation suit or, in, or infinite chemical suit and whatnot, e infinite heat resistance or be in berserker mode the whole time, you know? Berserker! Like, like I mean, th th those were kind of legendary in their own right. And, you know, if, if you had already played through the game and you wanted to kind of get more out of it, like maybe you wanted to kind of hunt for secrets, I mean, that, that was a good way to do it. it. It added some real replay value to the game as opposed to... As, as, I mean, and yeah, if you were a newbie, you could you could put it in in the run through the game. But you know, I I don't really recommend that. It's no cheat like, codes, right? No, no, no. Nah. You you should absolutely go through the game uh, just uh, raw for first first time through. And then if you for can sure. make it through, then then if you want to really kind of complete the game, then yeah, put on God mode and maybe. Uh, uh, put in the get everything code at the beginning of each level and just uh, go go around looking for, go around, go around exploring you know Th Ugh. this has always been a game that really really rewards a little bit of exploration you know like especially if you really want to get like a high kill rate or if you want to be like 100% the uh, secrets and everything you know definitely i mean it, it, it that's what was really really cool once again going back to the level design you know it really rewards you kind of you know looking everywhere you know yes it really does you know and you can find some things that will help you through later levels if you take the time to explore you know and then there are so many things that i was like wow if i had known that this was here the first time i played through this level because <laughs> i mean there are parts yeah. of the game where if you don't manage your resources well it you know, you, you really have to, to, to struggle, and you might run out of ammo and not really have a lot of powerful weapons to use. Uh, also, if you die on a level and, and you don't have a save that you can reload, uh, you, you start every level from square one again, and every episode starts from square one regardless. So, uh, th yeah, there yeah. You know, the, there can definitely be a challenge, and I think that that's integral to your first playthrough is dealing with, you know, the sparse resources at times. But, you know, if you take your time and, you know, maybe go back and, like, replay a level and, and, and you can, uh, or, you know, start and, like, replay the episode if need be, you can go through each level uh, in a way that conserves down ammunition better you can find more weapons and ammunition in places you didn't think to look before and that'll come in handy once you get to those boss encounters because let me tell you i mean you get thrown into you know the final boss level of each episode that's that's a, a hell of of a time i mean and that and at the end of uh, knee deep in the dead you go come across the two hell knights who i think are nicknamed the bruiser brothers Oh man, that 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 particular boss battle has always been an issue for me because, I mean, not not only do you have to pretty much take them on uh, head head on at first, but you have all that lava around you. So I mean, you, you're going to lose a lot of health. I mean, no matter no matter what you do there. So I mean, no you've really what. just got to kind of yeah, you've really got to kind of find the just the right angle to kind of take them on without uh, while, while evading their. Uh, uh, their energy blasts and everything. So that that you one you need a good gun. You, and yeah, there's, you need. There's no way around. De that. Definitely, you you at least need the chain gun, if not the plasma gun, maybe a rocket launcher if you can uh, get a beat on them long enough. You know, the, the the thing about them is that they they're very quick, very quick on their feet. So, I mean, it's very very easy for those two to really overwhelm you really quickly. So you got to be really on your toes, like quick on your feet and. Just kind of make sure that you make your hits count, you know? And then Hell Knights will make a recurring appearance as just regular enemies in the later episodes. 
Uh, oh, yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> as you move on to harder bosses, I mean, Shores of Hell ends with the fight against the Cyber Demon. Uh, Ooh, and Cyber Demon. That level is designed around the rocket launcher. He's firing rockets at you. There's all these rockets laying around. Uh, unlike the, the Hell Knight level where you can be fucked if you don't come in with a good gun, that one at least gives it to you. You know, it's like, okay. But if you manage, if you can manage to come in with the fucking, you know, plasma gun, or I don't know if the BFG was in the second I, I think it was. I, I, I think you could uh, find it in a secret area in that particular uh, level before somewhere. Yeah, I, I think you might so. be right. Um, so, you know, that's going to be useful. And then, of course, there's the fucking spider demon or the spider mastermind or whatever it's called at the end of uh, Inferno that uh, you're going to want to bring the, the big fucking gun in for. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you 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 kind of really need to blast them with everything that you got. So, yeah, the BFG is going to be your in the rocket launcher going to be your best bets there. May, maybe the chain gun because the the cool thing about the chain gun is that it kind of has a staggering effect on your enemies. Like if you, if, like like if, if you're able to, you can actually kind of pin your your enemy down a little bit and and whittle his uh, health down until he dies. Yeah. And that thing has a fucking a fucking chain gun on itself that's constantly facing you. Let me tell you, I came into that level with very little health left over from the previous level. But if I I know if I restarted that I was gonna have to start over with the handgun. And I think that game gives you a rocket launcher and some rockets, but I realized that against this final boss of the original three episodes, I was going to need the best equipment the game had to offer. And it gives you a little bit of help, but not a lot. Thank God for quick saves. <laughs> I was able Absolutely. To <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was able to beat it with the help of quick saves uh, and uh, very, very little health, but the remainder of my uh, ammunition and the big fucking gun with a bunch of uh, energy cells. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the other interesting thing about the, uh, about the weaponry in Doom is how, uh, is how, I mean, they, they actually really have a interesting balance to them, you know? Like, like, they have pros and cons. Like, I mean, you start off with a pistol. I mean, the pistol's very accurate, and, you know, I mean, you, you, you point at it and you fire at it, it's going to hit, but, I mean, it's very limited in its range. It's limited in power. And then, then of course, you have the shotgun, you know, which is going to... Yeah, yeah, the shoddy, which of course is going to pack a little more punch and it's going to have a little more spread, especially in corridors, but it has a slower rate of fire, you know? And of course, l l like I said, I mean, you had the aforementioned staggering effect of the chain gun, but I mean, same with the plasma rifle, that tends to kind of go through ammo like like it's nothing, you know? Like like, like you, you, you can go through half of your ammo just on one pinky demon, even if you're not careful enough, yeah, you know? Yeah, so you want to you want to use the right weapons for the right enemies save some exactly. of those better guns for uh the harder types of enemies and also just you know like you said using the right guns for the right situations of course there's Absolutely. sort of an yeah. ebb and flow to it you can kind of just shotgun everything if you get really good at that whole shotgun cycle but uh, oh, so I, I love <laughs> That, that's actually my favorite way of going through the game is with the shoddy and just fucking blasting, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, it's a good way to really clear a room, you know? If you have, like, multiple uh, enemies, you have pinky demons and imps and shotgunners in, in, all in a room, I mean, it, the shotgun is a great way to kind of take multiple enemies out at, at once, so. Definitely. So, you know, like the shotgun's kind of like my main weapon that I use. Uh, the pistol I'll really only use up until I get the shotgun or if the shotgun's out of ammo in, in the earlier levels of a chapter. But, you know, then when it comes to the bosses or certain types of enemies, I might pull out the chain gun, the plasma rifle, and, of course, the BFG are going to be reserved for those, you know, ultra-difficult enemies in the game uh, or, or when you're surrounded by a lot of them. Absolutely, yeah. And, and I mean, of course, with, with, with the BFG... I mean, it, it's total overkill depending on uh, on what you're doing. I mean, if you have, like, a bunch of pinkies and maybe some bruisers, it's like, yeah, you're going to want to kind of use that because it, it does have that effect of uh, pretty much killing everything that, uh, that's around the blast radius, sort yeah. of. So, 
So I mean, like like that that that's good for especially like in Inferno where you're dealing with a lot more like caco demons. You're dealing with uh, maybe more imps and, and yeah, whatnot. The caco demons you know? are are a, a good use of. Uh, the plasma rifle, at least. Uh, Absolutely, the plas the plasma rifle. Yeah, it just you, you can just unload on the, on that and just be done with the caco demon in a few seconds. You know, you can so. really stock up on ammo too. If, if if like you said, if you if you take your time exploring, use the right guns for the right situations, you'll carry over that ammo to the next level, and, and that can be really helpful and make some of yeah. those more difficult encounters a little bear more bearable. But there's always a challenge. And there's also the fact that you can actually build up your health and your ammo with uh, health and ammo bonuses, which are, which are all over the place in this game, depending on the, uh, the difficulty that you play with. But, like, I mean, you, you can build your, uh, your uh, armor up to about 200%, where, I mean, you can take some damage without, uh, without losing a whole lot of health. Right. And then you can find power-ups like partial invisibility or fucking berserk, which I automatically berserk switches mode. to your berserk. fists and lets you punch enemies and make them fucking explode. Fuck yeah, man! That that's a lot of fun. And of course, the chainsaw. The, the chainsaw. The chainsaw is it's a chainsaw is especially fun if you're playing in God mode, because I mean, you could just get up close to these enemies and you could just like saw them all down. You, you know, the chainsaw <laughs> was my go-to for pinkies, because they'll come yes. up oh, right no, to yeah. you. Yeah, it, it's another weapon where you can uh, have that staggering effect as well. You yeah. know, it's just, it's just unfortunately you have to get up really, really fucking close to for it to be effective. So, so I mean, if you're talking about any enemies that have projectiles, I mean, they they can take care of you pretty easily. But the pinkies are melee enemies, so they're they're pretty. Uh, yeah. The the the, sh the chainsaw is actually pretty effective against them. Uh, but if you can manage to get in close to one of the tougher enemies, that can be really useful. Uh, you see, I I'm watching this playthrough right now, uh, and this is I think uh, the first level of Shores of Hell, if I'm not mistaken. And this dude just spawned into a place, and uh, a dozen fucking pinkies started yeah, attacking him yeah. uh, after teleporting in. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're watching the demo mode of the original game on uh, PlayStation Classic on the uh, Auto Bleem. Uh, th th this is a version called Crispy Doom, and it's actually based off of the original shareware version of Doom, so it doesn't have the uh, HD mod that a lot of, uh, I think that's called like CZ Doom or something like that, to where they uh, upscale the... Uh, the graphics and everything a little bit. So, so this this version that we're that we're seeing right here, this is closer to the way that I remember Doom looking uh, on old school hardware. Nice. You know, so th th this is closer to the original version. the The version that you have on Switch Lite, it's it's definitely kind of. Uh, like very much updated. It has that upscaling to it, and it looks great, and it plays great. E even though my Switch has a uh, joystick lag, but. Mm. But I mean, honestly, I mean, it—it's kind of nice to see Doom the way that I remember it, you know. Yeah, dude. I actually, my experience with this game was downloading it for the the Xbox 360. Oh yeah, yeah. And it was just one of those side games that you could just you know play through when uh when you got bored playing a. Uh, you know, Halo 3 or Modern Warfare 4. Yeah, you know? yeah, if you just wanted a different experience from yeah. something like that, because that was when you started to have the more modern trappings of, of first-person shooters. You started exactly. to have the more milsim exactly. stuff and everything. This, you know? this game was meant to, like, keep your skill sharp in first-person shooter, too. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, go back and forth and just play all the shooters just to... Keep your targeting right on center, really. Yeah, it, but 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 it's all. It also kind of feels a little arcadeish, right? It almost it, it has kind of that twitch. Actually, feel. I did download the arcade version for the the Xbox 360. Yeah. Huh. And, bro, it was pretty unique. I I think I still have it on my 360 drive. Nice. Hell yeah. Yeah, I have an, uh, I have the uh, the elite. The 360 drive still. Yeah. So I just nice. need, I just I just need a fresh 360 so we can play some old shit again. You know? We could find one of those pretty easily, I think. Yeah. I mean, yeah. one of the cheap ones that were like ninety nine dollars. I mean, yeah. You know, yeah. you just plug the hard drive to it. It's the same shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a game that's persisted into the modern era. Doom has never stopped being relevant, and that's what's really kind of that's what's really kind of incredible about it. It, you know, 
Oh, really? Yeah, yeah dude. It, it, it's a testament to the uh, to the game design of uh, Romero, the Carmax and Hall. You know, I mean, and, and it's crazy. I mean, this was just a small team of uh, developers that managed to pull together this this unique world and with this crazy gameplay and this fucking amazing level design and everything. I mean, it, it, it was really just, it was really just these developers just kind of firing in all cylinders, like right at the right time, you know, in the right place. Timing plays. And, and yeah. everything. Just the whole concept of it is bad shit. It mixes sci-fi and horror. It's a, it's a game that's set on the moons of Mars and Mars itself. Uh, where there's experiments going on uh, with a futuristic corporation that fucking uh, is ex- is opening portals to hell, and hell starts taking over, and you are a UAC Marine that was sent to one of the moons of uh, of Mars because you assaulted a superior for. Ordering you to <laughs> fire on unarmed civilians. I mean, how <laughs> fucking metal is that? Just that's and, and metal this, as fuck, dude. Just regular fucking marine is just descending further into hell, seeing all sorts of fucked up shit and dealing with hordes of of terrifying monsters and straight up punching them in the face and making them explode <laughs> <laughs> while metal is playing. A, a big part of that, though, was because what this game was originally going to be, it was going to be a um, a version of Alien. Apparently, it was going to be pa- based off of the uh, Alien franchise. So, okay. but that that fell through, and uh, instead of uh, the whole you know Alien species uh, angle and everything, they, they they kept the sci-fi horror thing, but they uh, decided to bring in the more overt satanic inter- imagery and everything, which panic. Yeah. Oh, I mean, th- this definitely played a big part of the satanic panic of the panic '90s panic. as well. Yeah, because it was a I mean, huge thing with Columbine and shit. Oh man, we know we, we we need to talk about that here in a little bit. It's like, yeah, cool. I mean that that little bit of infamy here. Ooh, but yeah. But yeah, it's like I mean that that's kind of uh, the origins of Doom in its own right, and it's and interestingly enough, uh, not too long not too long after this on PlayStation, they would make a, a first person Alien trilogy game. So. I mean that, that that game would eventually be made, and it would u- it would utilize a lot of the uh, mechanics that uh, Doom actually set in stone. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's just a crazy fucking experience. I mean, Doom along with Mortal Kombat is one of the reasons the ESRB exists. Absolutely, yeah, definitely. And and I like how I, I like how each level just kind of descends further into the ma- or sorry each episode descends further into the madness i mean you go from one moon to the other to hell itself and then by the end of the original three episodes you find yourself back on earth everything seems fine and then all of a sudden you found out that the demons have come to earth and your pet rabbit is head is impaled on a spike how metal a fucking ending is that <laughs> Metal as fuck, dude. It's like, God damn it. And then it goes right into Doom 2 and everything, which is which was another good little expansion of the uh, of the core gameplay. There's Thy Flesh Consumed, which takes place between Doom 1 and 2, uh, have, has you uh, going through uh, several levels of just these, like, areas that are floating above the Earth, and uh, it's just kind of, I, I think it's kind of the the journey, you know, from where you end up at, at the end of Doom 1 to Doom 2, 
uh, and you end up facing a lot of the same enemies, and it is quite a bit harder. I mean, they've assumed yeah. that you've played through Doom 1. Hell, the game, the fi- uh, Ultimate Doom expansion was released after Doom 2, so they had a little bit of that uh, in, in uh, foresight. So, you know, they were able to approach the level design in that way. Now, I still haven't played Doom 2, but God, Die Flesh Consumed kicked my ass ass <laughs> oh yeah it, it 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 just ramps up the uh difficulty to insane, insane levels and it's like i i'm gonna tell the truth i i've i've never really played all the way through uh thy flesh consumed i i haven't really played through all of it Dude. so i mean i've 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 played through it long enough to get my ass totally handed to me and uh i i, I encountered it much like i encountered a lot of uh of doom you know was uh going with my mom to like office max or whatever oh. or to to uh like uh, wherever the pc store was and uh playing demo versions of this on the demo pcs like it, it was almost always doom or doom 2 or some something like that that was always uh being demoed on these p these uh, pcs and whatnot so oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean that 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 was where I initially kind of first encountered Doom, and uh, and and then eventually I played the Super Nintendo version. Which I mean, if I don't know if you've ever played that port, that port is not too great. Yeah, honestly. I watched the uh, Angry Video Game Nerd episode, and he talks about the uh-huh. various ports, and it's actually kind of baffling how many times they tried to recreate the Doom experience on different consoles and failed in, you know, one small way or a few big ways. <laughs> yeah, like, like like you had the, the original Final Doom on PlayStation, you know, and you had the original Doom and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, it, it was ported to 3DO, which was also a total shit port. It was ported uh, ported to 32X, the, the Sega 32X, which it was not the worst version of the game, honestly. It got pretty close to... The, for, for what I understand, the 3DO version got pretty close to the original PC port, but it just didn't have the music. You know, and that's for kind some of reason. interesting because one of the, the things surrounding the background of Doom was that came about during a time where PCs were struggling to keep up with consoles, you know? That whole, like, scrolling effect that we had on, uh, that we had on consoles, you know, was something that the original developers that would, that would go on to form id Software uh, initially struggled with in back of their, their early shareware days was, was, you know, taking that scrolling format and, and you know, porting it to PC, uh, and what they managed to do was take that scrolling effect and, and throw it into three dimensions uh, and do a first-person shooter. And uh, it, it's actually kind of interesting that none of the consoles managed to emulate that quite as well as the PC did. Yeah, it is. I mean, but, but I mean, by God, they tried. By <laughs> <laughs> God, this like, this game has run on just about everything. I mean, everything. Yes. I fucking mean, you, you, everything. You want to talk about some crazy shit? This is, you can play Doom on a pregnancy test. Because why not? <laughs> <laughs> you, you can play it on a uh, QPOS system uh, at your, uh, at your, uh, at a register. You can play it on a keyboard key. A keyboard key. <laughs> Damn it, dude. <laughs> dude. You can play oh my it on God, gut man. bacteria. Fucking shit, dude. Jesus. <laughs> you could play <laughs> Doom on Doom in the one of the mods. You could play Doom on 100 pounds of moldy potatoes on an Apple Watch <laughs> on a MacBook wow. Pro po- touch bar on a fucking calculator on a single key of a keyboard. A single key of the keyboard could totally play Doom all, all the way. On a camera, and an iPod, you're, and f- You're forgetting a... A, ta- a Tamagotchi, you pet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, I, I think it was ported to Gamecom back in the day, the Tiger Gamecom. I think that had a version. It's on Tiger Electronics. I, uh, yes. Yes, there is a Tiger Electronics Doom game. Oh, my God. Dude, yeah. There is a chainsaw that you could play Doom on. What the fuck? I mean, That's how, ridiculous. It doesn't get more better than that. That's that's ridiculous, man. 
You can play shit. it on the Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. You can play it on a thermostat. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can play it through you can play it through the Donkey Kong 64 game through the arcade version. Oh uh, yeah, I'm right. Done, probably. Right. I mean you're playing Mario through the arcade version of that. Right? A parking kiosk, a smart car. Although Duh! I don't recommend that while you're driving. A Tesla robot. No, just <laughs> oh my god. Nah. I mean, could you imagine if they run Doom on a Tesla robot? A Tesla iRobot, dude. Oh god. Will Smith's gonna have to shoot him. Yeah, Will Smith's gonna have to kill them all. <laughs> Like 100%. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of become an in-joke of the gaming community to basically port Doom. And to, you know, can it run Doom is the question. And almost everything has been tried. I think even on, like, uh, Atari. I think they've they've made a descaled version on Atari of Doom. Yeah, yeah I think they have. Damn. Yeah, it, it's ridiculous. It's out of everything. Crazy. I mean, like I said, we we have it right here as a, it's a uh, it, it actually comes with a uh, download of AutoBleam. So, and th that's what's just so great about Doom is that it's ubiquitous, and it was shareware. It was open source. That you know, true to uh, id Software's shareware origins, uh, where I mean, the developers used to just take games and straight up rip them and port them to PC. That's what they started out doing. I mean, one of the uh, one 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 of the like, projects that they worked on was taking the you know two D side scrolling from the Mario games uh, and and ripping a game out of that. Uh, they I believe it was uh, Adrian Carmack who worked on that, uh, and John Romero uh, urged him to try to sell the idea to Nintendo. So they approached Nintendo and said, "Hey, we've ported." Super Mario 3 to the PC. You don't even have to, uh, you know, involve us or whatever. Just pay us for our time. And, of course, Nintendo wanted to sell more Nintendo consoles, so... Yeah, yeah. So that, 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 that was a no-sell. That, that was a no-sell, I'm sure. But, you know, that was the origins of the team that worked on Doom. And so what they did was they made Doom moddable. And... You know, to this day, people add mods to this game. Just about anything you can think of, you know, Star Wars, Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, they actually have, uh, th th there actually is a uh, infamous horror mod called MyHouse.Wad, which apparently, uh, apparently is a pretty uh, freaky horror game using the Doom, uh, the, the, the Doom engine and everything, but... We 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 should, if we're going to get into mods, we should talk about quite possibly some of the most infamous uh, wads that was ever made, and then they were made by a uh, couple of uh, little shits by the name of Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, the uh, the Columbine shooters. They Ooh. they actually made they, they they were very very deep into the wad community at the time. They made a video showing what was going to happen before it happened. Yeah, yeah, they they made they the basement tapes, that? but oh my they, god, <laughs> they also made a bunch of doom wads, and uh, so, some of them you can actually they, they they found them and they released them on uh, the internet. I think you can go on itch.io right now and you. Can can download the original wads that were created by Harris and Klebold. But the, the one that you can't find, because apparently it is uh, uh, sequestered under police custody and everything, uh, legend has it they did make a wad map of Columbine to, to actually plan the attack. So, I mean, that may or may not be true. I, I think that it has been verified. But it's not amongst the the uh, wads of theirs that you can find. But I mean, yeah, you 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 can one hundred percent find uh, most all of the wads that Harrison Klebold made back in the nineties online now. Like, yeah, it's all there. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 it, it was lost media for the longest time, and now it's they're all available. Other than the more infamous one, they're all available now. Damn crazy shit man that. yeah i mean it, it and, and that that just adds to the overall controversy of doom because doom was uh was e like very 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 deeply scrutinized even more after Columbine. yeah they try to take it to core and pull everything off the shelves too yeah, they, they even did. then they, they i mean the, the game was never actually banned but this almost came close to uh to uh, banning this game very close to God it. God damn. But 
But but it's not like anything that it, it software could have controlled because I mean it it, it was open source uh, moddable content, you know? I mean, what can you really do there? Right. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I mean a game is not killing people. It's the it's the person that's doing it. Come on. I, at the end of the day, yeah. yeah We're talking I mean, about come on, some man. Very fucked up people that happen to be mm. fans of it. And, you know that that's a core. They did the same. They, they did the. Dude, oh, I'm sorry. They, they did the same thing with the music in the 80s. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? They, yeah. they tried taking uh, Iron Maiden to court, Judas Priest to court, Ozzy Osbourne to court. And that was all pretty much from the same satanic panic that uh, scrutinized this game as well. And yeah. this you know, game that, that's the that balls very same. to have actual satanic imagery. <laughs> mm -hmm. hey, fuck yeah, man. I mean, there, there's pentagrams all over this. There, there's a goddamn map that's, a, that's an entire pentagram. For fuck's sake. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it, it's like, I mean, th th that that's just something that you have to say. This is one of the most metal video games ever made. I mean, it, it's metal all the way through and through. Fuck you yeah, know? it is. And, and, you know, I mean, and that's something that, you know, gamers and metal have been a thing for the longest time. Yeah, you know? honestly, it's it's one of those games where you just sit down with a fat sack of weed, really. Fuck yeah. It, it, it's also one of those early stoner games. Yeah, you just kind of. play all night and just get some good KB bud or something. <laughs> Haven't had that in a while, but... Oh, I'm Dude, sorry, I don't know what that is. 100... 100% <laughs> though, I mean, you can tell this game was made by a bunch of fucking metalhead nerds, you know? Absolutely. Abs <laughs> fucking absolutely, man. And I wouldn't be you know? surprised if they were smoking pot while they were programming it. <laughs> yeah. This is a, definitely a stoner video game right here. Oh, definitely. Like, with, without, without a shadow of a doubt. Play it all night and just have a good time. I, I, I would say that probably a good 420 special for collateral gaming would probably be uh, Doom Clones. You know? Yeah, honestly. Honestly, that would be. Um, that's not because a bad it, idea it, for a 420 edition of the bonus round or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I can tell you right now, if, the, if there's uh, one thing that was cloned more than Mortal Kombat, it was Doom. You yeah. know, I mean, oh, there, no and, shit. And Goldeneye there, looks like this, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and there was, uh, I mean, there was a lot of games that came out in the like on the 3DO and everything, like like PO'd and Killing Time, you know, and yeah. also games like. Uh, Games like Duke Nukem and Duke Red Redneck Nukem. Rampage. We forgot about Duke Nukem, bro. Yeah, Duke Nukem 3D. Shit. I mean, the, I mean, th this game uh, lay, laid the groundwork for those games, obviously. Yeah. In addition to spawning numerous sequels, expansions, and reboots, uh, it also, as I mentioned earlier, popularized the front first-person shooter genre and made gaming a viable career for a lot of people. It would not be an understatement to call Doom arguably the most influential video game of all time. It really is. I mean, it, it pretty much uh, set the gaming industry on a uh, course for uh, bigger things in so many ways. It's, you know? st it's still got the most downloads, you know. It, it does. You know, this is still, I mean, it's one of the most ported and most downloaded games of all time, really, when you really think about it. Yeah. You need to have this. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Doom is one of those things that I, I think any gamer needs to play. Uh, and also one thing that it, that it, another thing that it invented was the death match. Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. Death matches were a big part of a uh, doom wads back in the day. It, it was doing multiplayer matches. So yeah. not the th first th this game is... to have multiplayer, but the first game where you had four players fighting each other to the death. And exactly. It, and John Romero literally invented the term deathmatch. Yeah. And, and just think about what that has led to. I mean, especially with multiplayer online gaming and everything. I mean, you could argue that there wouldn't even be like a Fortnite if it wasn't for the death matches in Doom. Yeah. I remember there playing deathmatch on like Halo 2. Sorry. There wouldn't be a Call of Duty. I mean, with the release of Black Ops Six, and God, no. that game is no. phenomenal. We well, can't wait to talk about it. But that wouldn't exist. And, and, and yeah, like like Robert just said. Yeah, you wouldn't have the the Halo Death Match, which is uh, yeah. which is pre pretty much what set the standard for modern death matches uh, yeah. nowadays. The first time I played that, yeah. guys, it was like on Xbox Connect. You had to wait for like everybody to join in. You'd, you'd yeah, a, it, yeah, it took yeah, you a while yeah, to yeah. find a game to get into fucking Xbox Connect, you know? Yeah. I remember, do, I remember <laughs> doing that shit. <laughs> Damn it, man. 
But yeah, I mean, Doom is the reason, you know, that shooters are as popular as there are today and multiplayer games. It really, gaming as a culture owes it all to this video game. And I guess that's as good a time as any to get into our final thoughts on Doom uh, 1993, uh, starting with you, Robert. Huh, my final thoughts on this, this game is like one of the originals that you can play all night if you have to, you know what I mean? Like, just sit there with your buddies, maybe just switch off on the controller or whatever, you know? Or play yeah. multiplayer together. There you go, exactly, Mo multiplayer yeah. this thing, and then, like Bo said, this thing leads you into, like, wanting to play more other, like, first-person, first uh, like, 64 games that are like this, too, almost, right? Yeah. And, I don't know, Doom, it, it always stuck with me. It's, uh, I mean, I didn't pick it up. When Bo picked it up, I picked it up later on, like in the 2000s. Yeah. But it was always a game that you can always, like, sharpen your shooting skills, you know what I mean? Uh, first person wise, I mean, going back from other shooters, you know? Definitely. And, you know, it's, this will home your craft in for just being, like, dead on accurate, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah, that's my experience with this. Hell yeah. Yeah, you want to get good at any first person shooter play the original doom <laughs> yeah definitely uh as for you bo what uh what are your final thoughts well first of all i think that there's one thing that we left out was one or, or a port that we left out maybe it's not so much a port but it's its own game is doom 64 which you know it's, yeah. it's pretty much kind of its own animal it, 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 it's its own type of game in, in its own right, you know? Yeah, like yeah was, the 64 version, dude. I, they, mean, I want to buy it now, you know? Yeah, they, they pretty much took the game and they pretty much, like, just rebuilt it from the ground up for the Nintendo 64 and to take advantage of, like, that analog stick and everything. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, if, if you ever have a chance to play Doom 64, play that. But as far as this original game right here, it's, it's like we said, this is really really influential gaming lore here you know i mean th this is such a storied game that i mean i don't know how much more we really added to the conversation as far as you know how important it is yeah. you know what what it means for like the gaming industry like how you know th this this probably led to a lot of people becoming uh, coders and everything you know yeah. in, in 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 other ways you know outside of gaming you know i mean th th this really uh kind of uh it it, it influenced the culture of pc gaming yeah. you know i mean th i i would say this is probably the origins of you know pc master race uh yeah, lore. yeah this is like you know? cyber cafe shit i love that yeah, stuff yeah too. yeah definitely right. But, I mean, the, just the fact that it was also so accessible. I mean, there, there was a lot of ports that you could choose from. Not, not all of them great, you know. So, so yeah, even if you weren't, uh, even if you didn't have a PC that could run it at the time, I mean, you could find a way to play it. You know, but I mean, nowadays it's so ubiquitous that like, like we said, I mean, it, you, you can play it on almost anything. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, like, like you said, we're, we're, we're playing the original shareware version right now on uh, uh, Crispy Doom on uh, Auto Bleam on PlayStation Classic. So it's like it, it's just so it's it, it's just always kind of been there. You yeah. know, I, I can't really think of gaming culture without it. Yeah, you, know? you can download this emulator to basically anything now. Yeah, and, and you can pretty much, and because it's open source, you can pretty much make your own first-person shooter from the uh, Doom engine, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, not not just make wads, but using Doom, you, you can even make your own, uh, your own enemies and your own characters and whatnot. So, I mean, th this opened up so many different creative avenues for gaming. That I mean, it, it, and it was such a leap forward for PC gaming, for for uh, for graphics, for uh, overall thematic elements and everything, you know. And and it's still to this day, it, it's very very of its time, but it still feels fresh as well. You know, like especially with a lot of the upscaling that's been done. Like, I mean, there, I, it just, it's just real difficult for me to really put in words how important this game is to me. You know, so 
Yeah. Yeah, man. It's important to a lot of people. Doom is, again, arguably the most influential video game of all time. And I'm so glad that I finally got a chance to experience that, that I got to struggle with it and and fight through these difficult hordes of enemies and experience this metal fucking story, you know, to be able to use the big fucking gun on the game's hardest bosses. Uh, Doom is, again, an experience that every gamer should have. Anyone that calls themselves a gamer should have. And, you know, by today's standards, it might seem kind of tame, but at the time, this was crazy fucking shit. Honestly, I still I think it's still pretty wild. I mean, I mean there's there's imagery in the game like a dude being crucified above a pit of blood and a beating heart. So, I mean, if you take the time to look at these environments, I mean, this fits you know, well amongst the annals of gaming ho- horror history. But yeah, Doom is is just such a metal fucking experience and i'm so glad i got to experience that it's a franchise that's going strong i mean we just got doom eternal a few years ago uh and we're looking to the release of doom the dark ages which is a prequel to the 2016 reboot i believe uh here very soon so it's a great time to revisit this franchise it's one of the most accessible video games of all time, if not the most. You can find it on just about any platform or things that aren't platforms as well. <laughs> so there really, <laughs> yeah, is, <right. laughs> there really is no excuse. It's, it's a fucking experience, man. Uh, and I'm excited to get into part two where we're going to talk about the uh, 2016 reboot. Uh, Megan should be joining me for that. Uh, and we can discuss that game and, and compare it. I, I've been playing through uh, the levels, and uh, yeah, I mean, it it, it, it does a, a really good job of modernizing the whole thing and still feeling like Doom, but there's just this quality to the original 1993 game that keeps it relevant and will continue to keep it relevant. As the angry video game dirt said, we will probably be playing the game when we go to Mars. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I mean, the first person to play Doom on Mars is going to be just a legend. Let's hope it's not Elon Musk. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, stick around for part two. Uh, and also uh, the rest of our uh, Spooky Month content, even if it extends beyond Spooky Month. Um, for sure, we should have out our Halloween special by Halloween Day on Amnesia the Dark Descent. Uh, and later this week, uh, Bo and I will be getting into the uh, uh, we'll be getting into Parasite Eve, uh, which I started playing and is actually a blast uh, for the uh, Halloween edition of the bonus round. Uh, as for our planned October content this month, uh, we're supposed to be getting into the Silent Hill 2 remake. Uh, Bo, I'd like to record that with you very soon uh, as well, uh, and if possible, we can get. You know those out before the end of the month. That would be great. If not, if it bleeds into October, fine. Um, I know we'll be doing a two-part episode on Silent Hill too. So, part one will be a spoiler-free review, and then part two will be going into full spoilers. And, and Bo will be joining me for part one here very soon. Oh yes, I, I can't wait to dunk on all the Silent Hill fog posting nerds. <laughs> Fucking degenerate gamer scum. And that's the end of our horror game content. Uh, Also in early November, uh, I'd like to get out our episode on Black Ops 6. Uh, Michael Toscano should be joining me and Zachary for that. Uh, I had the opportunity to go visit Zach in Georgia this last weekend. Did you have a good time? Yeah, I had a great time. It was amazing. We got to experience the launch of Black Ops 6. It's a Mm. great game. So look forward to our spoiler-free review of Call of Duty Black Ops 6 uh, with, you know, the new movement system and game modes and guns. And honestly, it's the most fun I've had with COD ever. And that's probably not saying a lot because I haven't played a whole lot of COD, but 
Uh, it's a hell of an improvement over Modern Warfare 3, in my opinion. So I'm excited for it. Uh, and then uh, next month, uh, our numbered episodes should be Mario and Luigi Brothership. Uh, again, in part one, we'll be doing our spoiler-free game launch review. And in part two, we'll get into full spoilers because that's a game that we're super, super excited about. Yeah, hell yeah. Nice. So, yep, that's what we have going on over uh, the course of October and November. And, uh, Bo, what's going on with Collateral Cinema? Well, as of now, uh, all, all of our uh, spooky content has uh, pretty, been re- pretty much been released. Uh, we have uh, our season premiere on Terrifier featuring uh, Stu from uh, Stu World Order Productions. So check that out. And we also just released our uh, review of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is a g- great amazing e- Great movie. episode. So F- tune fu- into that episode. Fucking awesome episode. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. And uh, we recorded our our Halloween uh, content with uh, Kaylee from Once Over with Kaylee on YouTube. Uh, that should be coming out soon. And also... Great, great host, by the way. Yep. Yeah, she's she's really, really awesome. And also, uh, we did our Terrifier 2 episode not too long ago so uh yeah look for that here very soon hell yeah yeah that'll be uh terrifier 2 will be the halloween edition of the director's cut yes that yeah that, that's for the director's cut yeah uh-huh. all of that's been recorded um so we should have that out by the end of the month uh and then uh november i think we're doing uh back to the future and street fighter 94 and uh, the fighter guest 94. host that we have f- for ha- for that on Street Fighter we have Vern from the the Cinema Recall podcast and uh, Jim from Film Rage joining us. You know, both both of them are alumni of the podcast and they're friends of the show and we are more than happy to have them on that episode and on Back to the Future we are going to have Reading Between the Reels with us. Uh, they've been uh, good friends with us on uh, Twitter for many years. They've uh, reposted our content and we've reposted theirs and we're finally going to have them on the show. So uh, yeah, look for that coming up in November and I don't know, maybe I don't know, what, what new movies are coming out in November? Maybe we can do a new a, an At the Movies episode or something. Can't yeah. really think of anything. We should. We'll, yeah. we'll have to look it up and see. Uh, yeah, because I'd love to do another at the movies review. Uh, Street Fighter '94 movie review, by the way, will be a Collateral Gaming collab because yes. that is a yes. uh, video game movie. And and I am in talks with uh, Robbie Sherman from uh, from conversations with uh, with Robbie Sherman uh, about doing a uh, episode with him on uh, one of the Lupin the Third movies. So yeah, look for that on his show coming very soon. Very cool. Uh, and Robert, as our as our special guest today, uh, any do you have anything to plug as far as your filmmaking career? Um, actually. It was pretty much an honor to be on the show with you guys. I mean, I wish we need to work together more. I, f- yeah. I, f- I feel like I need yeah. to be on the show more now, too. Yeah, play more games and yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. Come I, on actually, collateral gaming more. It's always good to work together with each other. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Push out more contact any way we can. But, uh, yeah, in the filming-wise, I'm still trying to push together a, a beginning of a script, though, you know? I have, yeah. a, I have a little bit of writer's block right now, but... Damn it. Hopefully to move past through that and uh, just collaborate on a script maybe with you guys. Yeah. But right now, right now, we do have Texas Sundown on the uh, Collateral Cinema YouTube. Uh, you can find that. There's an 11-minute short. It was written in, by Robert Ortegon, starring Robert and also both of us, and also directed pretty much by all of us and everything. So, Ashley Chancer's my co-star, second mm-hmm. lead. So yeah. th- there's a future <laughs> there. Yeah, I am. There's, a, yeah. there's a future there for that second lead. So, yeah, yeah, check right, that guys. out. And, yeah, they're also a Killing Night. That That's out there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> wherever you get your youtube no, sorry. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and if you're, if you're looking for wherever you're getting your youtube <laughs> um <laughs> that's a great uh <laughs> mo- short film to watch during the spooky season so uh if you're checking this episode out before halloween then uh yeah that that, that, that that's that's some great fucking content for the season oh yeah but oh, yeah you can find us wherever you get your podcasts. We are on uh, most social media platforms as well. Uh, we do have a Patreon. It hasn't been updated in forever, but 
It's there. Uh, you can also check out our merch store on T Public and get you some collateral media swag. Uh, very soon, I think uh, Bo should get the uh, collateral Let's Play content started back up again. So stick around for that and uh, check out uh, what I think he's going to do a Phoenix Wright playthrough. And oh yeah. You have, That's right. Uh, Objection. Beat him up. <laughs> beat him up Fridays. I don't know. I'll, I'll probably get back to beat him up Fridays uh, pretty soon. I, I, I took a break from it because I was. I don't know. Those games were starting to kind of blend together a little bit. Fair enough. <laughs> but, but yeah, I'll, I'll be getting back to that very soon. But that's still still fun content to to get into. Yeah, and honestly, like, I mean, I've been just struggling to get most of this content out, so. I haven't really had a chance to plan it, but uh, with any of the games that we're covering on on Collateral Gaming, you know, that I'm playing through, uh, I, I think that I might as well record myself and, and, and do some Let's Plays just, you know, just playing fucking games that, that we're doing prep for uh, or just any other games that I happen to come across, anything I'm, I'm not doing on the podcast and have a chance to kind of bring that up. Uh, maybe new games that have come out that we haven't, you know, been able to do a game lunch review for. So stay tuned for more uh, Let's Play content. Uh, one of these days I'll remember before I, I get on a game to just record myself doing it and upload something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, so we'll, we'll uh, contribute to the Collateral Let's Play content as well. Uh, but I guess that's all we've got for now so stick around for part two of our season premiere on the doom franchise uh once again uh welcome to season seven of collateral gaming we're calling this the golden season uh i mean welcome to the show baby not only have we covered doom which is you know one of the most influential if not the most influential video games of all time but we're also going to be covering Ocarina of Time, which popularized the action adventure genre and Super Metroid. So Hell yeah. it's gonna Hell be yeah, Super Metroid. <laughs> it's gonna be a great fucking season uh, with a lot of bangers, uh, and it's just getting started. But uh, with all that being said, I've been Ashley Chancellor. I've been the Doom Guy, and I've been your special guest, Robert Oregon. This is Collateral Gaming, and we are out. Laters, y'all. Collateral Gaming is a collateral media podcast. All music and game clips are owned by the respective creators and are used for educational purposes only. Please don't sue us. We're poor.